everybody. Pastor Andy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. I want to thank you all for joining me for the last couple of weeks as we've started this study, this daily walk through the book of John, and in particular as we're looking at the person and character of Jesus, who he is, what he stands for, and what he means to our lives. As we continue this journey, we'll walk through every chapter and every verse, what it means, and how even more importantly, how it applies to your life. Because as all relationships should be, they have an impact on our life in some capacity. Our spiritual relationship with Christ is the one that impacts us not only now, but later. Because again, friends, the question about eternity is often one that is very uh, confusing to a lot of folks that don't really understand the enormity of that, Uh, but also it's been confused and kind of really all mixed up because of all the multiple versions of explanations over the years through religion, through different faith groups, through different translations, through different ideologies, and whatever the case. The bottom line is when we come to know Christ personally, he reveals himself to us in such a manner that all can understand. In fact, the Bible itself speaks of a childlike faith being what is required to enter into the kingdom of heaven. What is he speaking of there? Well, he's just simply saying, when we come to trust him, then what he tells us, we believe. Whether we understand it or not is really neither here nor there. The fact that God said it, I believe it, that settles it. When we can come to that mindset, we're much easier able to navigate those waters. We don't really get bogged down in all the details. We don't really get bogged down in all the the things that seemingly are confusing or, or maybe even impossible to believe, you know, the supernatural things and whatever the case, because we don't allow them to be distractions. And that's where we move into in this particular section of Scripture that we look at today. So we're going to pick back up. In chapter 1, we're at verse 18, and it simply says this, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now, what we're talking here beyond visibility. Okay, When it says no one, no man, no person has seen God at any time. Now, again, we're speaking of in the physical. We're not speaking of the presence because certainly wind and power and, and creation, all, all we all sense the presence of God. But in particular, what this is talking about is no one has ever comprehended God. No one has ever really embraced that fullness of understanding God other than Jesus because they're one in the same. They are the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so this one-of-a-kind God expression, this one who exists at the very heart of the Father, this one who made him visible as he walked, because he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He indeed would be the one qualified to do such. And that's what this verse is speaking of. Nobody, no human, no person has done that, that is still able to tell us anything. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that God walked with Adam and Eve. But he's speaking of here in times of which anyone has comprehension of and understanding and and be able to relate back to. And it says, no one has understood God but Christ. Therefore, he is qualified to be that one to explain. Jesus in the flesh was able to provide a very clear picture of the Father, the character of God. What does that mean? And we see through him love and compassion and forgiveness and grace and mercy and all the characteristics of God lived out. Again, it wasn't a story. It wasn't a, a, a myth or a legend or, or whatever, well, you know, so-and-so said this or said, it passed down third party. This came straight from Christ himself. And so this is why the passages before that we talked about, that he dwelt among them. He dwelt among us, among, among humanity. 
Why is that important? Because of this verse right here. No one had seen God. Meaning, understanding the, the visibility of the characteristics, real love, real patience, real kindness, real forgiveness, real grace, all of those things were lived out in the person of Christ. And that is why it is vital, vital that we understand the person of Jesus so that we understand the desire to have a relationship with him. Because it is him and him alone who displays the character of God in a visible presence so that we can understand what it is that he's asking of us. And we can see it on display. We can see it in action. You know, again, it's one thing to talk about something. It's another thing to do it. Lots of people talk about things. We have professions that people, they talk all the time about stuff, and they never do anything. They never accomplish anything, or they never display anything that they're talking about. It's always just words. After a while, we begin to feel that's not real. In other words, you don't mean it. It is like being in a relationship and constantly telling someone you love them verbally. But never express that physically. Never express that emotionally. Never express that through a gift or through kindness. Or it's just a word. Words mean nothing when they have no substance behind them. Especially words of emotion and words of feeling. That's not how God operates. And that is not the relationship that he wants to have with you and me. He wants to have a loving graceful, merciful, forgiving, kind, peaceful relationship with us. It is a parent and a child relationship. We want that with our children. We want that with our grandchildren. We want that with those that we love dearly because we want them to see that it's real. It's not superficial. It's not just a thing to do for today and find something new tomorrow. This is not about being fickle. This is not about train, you know, changing from one day to the other. This is about consistency because consistency allows growth. When we look at something like that in the natural, we understand when we consistently take care of something, in particular something that is alive, a plant, a tree, a flower, a puppy, whatever, every day it gets stronger. Every day it gets bigger. Every day it grows more. Every day it produces something or shows a sign of something. That is what our relationship with Christ is to be. And we see in this one verse, he is most qualified because he's been there. He's the one who's seen. He's the one who knows. So we move on and we look at John. We go back to John, the uh, point of this first part of this book, not the one who authored it, but John the Baptist himself. Remember, in our first verses, he was the one sent by God for the mission of telling everyone Jesus was on the way. Jesus was here, that he and who he was. He was the light of the world, the light of life, all those different components. But the rumors, we understand that today, you know, rumors and 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 false stories and fake news and all this other stuff. It was it's it's been around for a long time. It's just got new titles as time has gone by. But the things were spreading around about who he might be because it was clear he had a message and it was clear that he had some type of assignment and that it was unknown to anybody else. They didn't get what. So their rumors started to swell around about who he might really be. And so we see in this next set of verses, and this is the record of John, that being John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? So they'd heard the rumors. They'd heard the, the, all the different things. And this, this statement here, that this is the record of John, it is just a simple statement telling us that this is the account of his ministry as it is written here in this book. And it's not recorded in the other Gospels. So this, this is a unique uh, passage in that sense, and it, it, it affects and reflects this person of John, who he was, and again, who he not only claimed to be, 
but what his purpose and intent was. So they asked John, they said, who are you? I mean, you, you got all this stuff going and you're talking to people and you're telling all these things, but who are you? Now, what they were getting at is because the rumors had been swirling around that he himself might be the one. He might be the Messiah. He might be, you know, the, the chosen one. He might be, there, there are all kinds of different things were heading around about who he might be. But the problem with that, as we will see later, is these very ones asking, these, these Pharisees and, and scribes and all these different priests and different ones, they were scholars of the law, scholars of the scriptures. They should have known. And we'll look at that later as we deal with the heart issue that they had happening, and Jesus addressed that later. But all the rumors were out there about who he might be, and again, whether he was the promised one or not. But John answered them, and he said, it says here in verse 20, and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So we're told here that he confessed. In other words, he answered them. He said, okay, here's, here's who I am. You want to know who I am? Here's who I am. But he didn't deny that some were calling him the Christ. Some were calling him, you know, the return of Elijah uh, from the dead. And I mean, just a lot that he didn't, he didn't deny that all of those things were being said. At the same time, he did not encourage the fact of people calling him that. He was not saying, oh, well, you know, hey, you never know. He wasn't leaving any doubt there. He was letting them know, indeed, I'm sent from God. I have an announcement of the light, but that's not me. I'm not the one. He says here, I am not the Christ. He made it clear that the rumors were not true. He was not the Christ, nor could he be. He was emphatic about this. He was very clear with his answer when he says, I am not the Christ. Why was that important? Because he knew without a doubt who Jesus was because of the clarity of the assignment he'd been given. Why was Jesus so clear? Because he stood out. It wasn't because he looked any different was any taller, had a, a greater tan or a greater glow or different physicality than those he stood around. It wasn't that at all. He, he, he was one of them. It says he came to his own. He looked like them, walked like them, talked like them. He didn't have a funny accent. He wasn't a blonde-haired, blue-eyed British guy like we see on the movies. He looked like them. He spoke like them. His character stood out because he was the only one who's ever seen God. And because of him, everybody else was able to see God. That is why he dwelt among people. That is why he was here. That is why he came and walked the earth, for people to be able to see God. And later he would say that, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So as we look at these passages, as we're beginning to move now deeper into the call of John and the purpose that he served, we will also see the depth of the character of Christ and why it is so important, friends, so important that we determine our desire for a relationship with him. Because I can tell you personally, it is not... And even, I even used to have a sign in my, in my office, in one of my former offices, it's not religion, it's Jesus. We get tied up into that. We get tied up into all the man-made things and the traditions and the rituals and the you got to do this and you got to say that and you got to bow this many times. That's got nothing to do with the relationship with Christ. The platform here at Making It Simple is just that, making it simple so that everyone can understand. It is that childlike faith. It is that not, not simplicity of watering down and dumbing down and, and making people feel small. As, as It's not that at all. It is, wow, now it makes sense. God wants to have a relationship with me. So Jesus came to represent that character, that visibility, that everything here on earth so that it could be seen, so that it could be recorded, 
so that I could be taught and understand the importance of that. It all goes together, friends. It's such a beautiful thing that God loves us that much. We'll see in this very book of John that God loves this world. And that world is encompassed not only in the sphere that is hanging in the in the at big time of space. It is every single person that dwells among it. All seven billion or more. And while not all of them believe and not all of them accept that, that doesn't separate us from the love of God. The offer is there. What a beautiful thing. It is my absolute earnest in prayer that all of you have a great, great day. I want to thank you for joining me here at Making It Simple. We're going to continue to walk through this daily. And, and again, and there will be times that we're going to be a little more serious. There's going to be times we're going to laugh. There's going to be times we may even cry when we understand the beauty of what God is trying to tell us here. See, oftentimes many have been scared to death about things of the Bible or things you know related to church or whatever the case. I'm here to remove that fear. I'm here to remove those doubts. I'm here to remove those clouds of confusion and just make it simple. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Have an awesome one. Talk to you soon. Take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going.